idle time is seven. Wait, oh, it didn't get it. Oh my gosh. Oh. I see you uh, got to the range a little early. Yeah, dude, I, uh, I had some stuff I wanted to work on. Yeah, so uh, what are you working on? I mean, the biggest thing is I just got a brand new holster from a piece. I want to get reps, getting pre uh, good grip presentation out of my, my Blackhawk. All right, so uh, how many reps did you get out of your holster there? Let's see, one. Uh, I mean, it was a good, it was one, it was a good rep. I got, I got one. All right, well, uh, how about we reset and uh, actually get some reps in and see where we're at? Yeah, that was next, that's what was next on my list. It's exactly, it's what I was gonna do when you got here. So I don't, why don't you, uh, let's see what you have in mind. So if you've been around the firearms industry for a long time, maybe you've been shooting since a wee little lad or lass, and you have gone to the range, you have probably noticed that you can go and plink and have fun, which is worth doing. You can go to the range with the goal to get a little bit better, but you end up leaving and not knowing, did I get better? What did I work on? I'm not really sure. And then you can also go to the range with a box of ammo allotted to certain drills and goals. Maybe you have a notepad, a shot timer, and other tools that we're gonna talk about in this video to measure your growth. With that in mind, I've also seen in myself with dry fire, how rapidly we can get better in those times in between being able to go to the range. Because let's be honest, not all of us have hundreds of thousands of rounds that we can burn every week or every month or every year on training. So how do we get better? When I first found firearms, I had the goal and desire to not just buy the gun or the plate carrier or the night vision, I wanted to become good and proficient with that stuff. Now, let me also start by saying, I am not a GM level pistol shooter. I'm not an incredible rifle shooter, but I can absolutely attest to the fact that with time invested with dry fire, that sweet time in between actually going to the range, not having any ammo around, I have absolutely improved and I've saved time and money by going to the range by investing in stepping into the garage, stepping into the shop, being in your family room or living room, watching TV and dry firing. So let's let's define dry fire real quick. There's, there's a lot of different loose terms, but the point is removing ammo from the firearm, from the whole scenario, and spending time getting better at something. Now that takes us to the first thing. If I can leave you with any three things on this video, you gotta hear this, and we're always gonna come back to these three things. Number one, Isolate what it is that you're trying to do. In dry fire, it's really easy for me to put a plate carrier on, my helmet, my nods, my belt, a pistol, and a whole ton of gear just to practice reloading my pistol. And I did that a lot when I first started. I wanted to wear everything that I had invested in just to practice something that I knew I sucked at. And on one hand, good on me for actually trying to practice and get better with all my gear. There is a time and place for that. But man, if you're sucking at getting your gun out of your holster from your EDC holster, don't worry about incorporating white lights, reloading once that gun is out or moving your feet. Let's tackle one project at a time. So number one, isolate the drill. Number two is pay attention to your attention spans. I'm guilty of this. I'll put a TV show on, I'll put a podcast on, or maybe I'll be really trying to be immersed in, I am trying to get better at transitioning from rifle to pistol. But after 30 seconds, that short attention span kicks in and then I'm not actually getting any better at anything. And in fact, I may be developing poor habits that result in me building some, I know muscle memory is a buzzword for some people, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. I'm building muscle memory on things that are not improving what it is I'm trying to work on. So isolate what it is you're trying to work on. And if you only have 30 seconds of attention span, be tuned in, give yourself a break and then come back. And then finally, a lot of people are aware of the fact that dry fire can build poor habits because we are not proving it. We're not, re we don't have the recoil of a rifle or a pistol. We can't see where those rounds are going. Was my dot actually where it was supposed to be? Were my irons aligned? Am I pulling the trigger too fast? So we always have to find a way to prove that the work that we're doing is paying off and growing us in the direction that we're trying to go. Finally, with all of this, this is really important. The four firearm safety rules still apply. So. Treat every firearm as if it was loaded. 
I am going to remove my source of feed and I'm going to set all ammunition aside. Check this out, I've been working on it. Okay. Whoa, stop, hold, what? You cannot be dry firing with ammo on body or around. Well, I'm trying to do a sponsor mention for Wideners. That, they provided fair, the ammo and everything, you know? Put the ammo aside, do your segment, talk about Wideners, okay. and then go back to dry fire. Thank you very much to Wideners. You guys provided the ammo. If you guys are looking for ammo of any kind, they have a wide variety, right? Correct. And they also have a lot of different kinds of ammo. So if you're looking for a specific kind of 5.56, 9 mil, 12 gauge, whatever it is, go ahead and check them out. They also have a huge selection that stays in stock. So thank you very much to Wideners. We appreciate it. You guys are doing awesome stuff and uh, you make content like this possible. So I'm gonna set this away off the table here in a minute. And I'm going to verify that this firearm is clear and safe. It's a really big deal. We are intentionally pointing the gun aggressively and pulling the trigger on some of these reps. So I want to ensure that I know the status of this firearm. Number two, never let your gun cross the path, your muzzle, flag, or laser in front of something that you don't actually intend to shoot. Now, we're not shooting a gun, but I wanna be aware of that round is going. And then the third one is, Never put your finger on the trigger until you're actually committed and ready to fire. Now, we're dry firing here, but that, that principle still applies. I am going to pull the trigger. I am aware of the fact that this gun will not go off if I pull the trigger. That being said, by getting a ton of reps, we can build subconscious safety into our movements in the firearm. So, I'm going to be aware of that. And finally, with dry fire, always know your target's foreground and background. So for example, I know that right behind Nick right there is a house. I do not want to dry fire that direction, even though I know that this gun is clear and safe. This direction, I know what is there, it is safe if I were to discharge a round, which I never want to do, and I am going to follow the other firearm safety rules. Now, I am clear and I am ready to start dry firing. So let's get into it. All right, so a common issue that I have whenever I get back to dry firing or I change clothes or the seasons change is that when I go to draw my EDC gun, I sometimes fumble this and I get a shirt with my pistol or maybe I'm not getting a really good master grip and I wanna fix where my thumb is, where my hand actually wraps around the grip of the gun. And so what I have found is that if I start working on the entire encompassing of drawing a gun, pressing out, boom, and then dropping a magazine, feeding a new one, I have issues with that, but ultimately I'm trying to resolve getting my, my hand on the gun the first time efficiently, and getting a good master grip. So here's what I'll do when I'm first stepping out the door and I have 30 seconds to try to get a really good rep before I go start the day. I'm going to simplify and I'm just going to focus on the one task at hand. And I'll do that 10 times, 15 times. And if I have a flannel on, if I have a jacket on, if I have a rain jacket, different t-shirts, that might feel a little bit different. If the holsters change, if the gun changes, I will spend time just fighting to the gun. Because here's the thing, if my apparel changes, what, what changes for me beyond this? Not much. I may be moving a jacket out of the way, but as soon as that gun is coming up out of the holster, I have a lot of reps and practice pushing that optic in front of me and aligning my sights and pressing the trigger. That takes us to the next point. So what if I'm working on just finding my sights or getting a good rep at finding my dot every single time that that gun comes out? If you buy a dot for the first time, you change the sights, you change the red dot, it is worth spending time finding our sighting system as fast as we can. Because if I'm super fast getting the gun out of the holster, but I'm not quick at actually aligning that dot, finding where it needs to be and taking a shot, we're slowing down at one of those locations. So I will sit, typically watching TV, shooting the main character, ensure that the gun is clear, and I'm always watching for the main character because I don't know exactly when he's gonna pop back up on the screen, press out, align my sights, and find the trigger. And I'll do that again, 15, 20 times. Once again, I wanna make sure that my mindset is not falling off. I'm not losing track of what it is that I'm doing. I don't wanna be distracted by other things and I don't wanna spend 30 minutes dry firing when 25 minutes of that time, I'm not actually tuned in and paying attention to the rep at hand. Now, how do we prove this? The way that we prove actually ensuring that I'm getting a good master grip is you need to go shoot. So take, take these principles as far as building a solid master grip, getting my garment out of the way, pressing my sights out, finding the dot, and squeezing around off 
in an efficient manner. So when you're actually at the range, start paying attention to not so much where the rounds are going, as much as how did that feel? We often get sucked into, well, I missed a little bit left, I missed a little bit right. And yes, that can be indicative of how your grip is actually on the gun. Is your support hand doing what it's supposed to do? Is your primary hand working too much? So on and so forth. But if your primary hand is not getting onto the gun efficiently and building a good grip for you, it's all gonna fall apart from there. And then beyond that, I'll go to the range and as far as working on my sight alignment, I'll work from compressed ready. I'm running the exact same drill that I spent a lot of time doing. This is now comfort mode. I've been doing this for weeks or days. On a beep, I'm working with a shot timer. I'll press out and I'll squeeze off one or two rounds. The reason for two rounds or even six is because I wanna be ensuring that I didn't just get one good rep with my dot. I wanna find the recoil and track where that dot is going. Now this leads us into some tools, a shot timer. So let's talk about shot timers a little bit here. So by now a lot of you guys are aware of the fact that shot timers can add a ton of benefit to our training, but not everyone talks about how much benefit they add in dry fire. And the hidden trick is the par time. So the initial beep that you have will go off. And then that second beep is actually telling you when the drill is supposed to end. Obviously that's our par. Well, I can control down to a hundredth of a second where that par timer actually starts and ends. So. I can take a notebook and I can keep track of, man, every time I go to the range, I feel like I'm just not getting my gun out of the holster as fast as I want. Cool, use that shot timer, go to the range, figure out where you are actually getting a first round shot out of your holster or a one R one with your rifle. Then come back and when you're dry firing, clear everything out and this is a part of isolate. I am just going to work on that one component of the drill and I'm going to work with my par time and try to push myself and speed up. So let's say that I am working on just getting the gun, again, straight out of the holster. I'm going to, let's make sure this sucker is clear. We're good. All of these are clear. I don't wanna have any extra ammo around. Awesome, we're set. So one second at the, at the first beep I'm gonna draw, at the second beep I should be pressing the trigger. Ah, okay. So now I'm working with a new holster and I need to make sure that I am getting that gun out of the holster efficiently. So maybe I'll be prioritizing a good grip and then as I press the trigger, I'm able to tell was that on the beep, before the beep or after the beep. All right, so as you guys can tell, the only standard that I'm working with is time. So to a degree, it allows me to prove it, one of our, our three components, but I do not have an accuracy standard. So I may visually see, yeah, I'm looking at that light switch on the wall. I think that I hit exactly where I needed to, but I don't know. So on one hand, this helps me keep rhythm and consistency. With a notebook, I can then go to the range and verify that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing but there are some extra things that we'll get into. In the meantime, if you guys are looking for a shot timer, you probably need to at least have one of these. Also consider buying one for your buddy because someone always forgets one. There's a link in our description. We have a discount code there as well. Go ahead and pick one up. They are well worth the about $100 that you spend on a shot timer. Speaking of shot timers, if you guys are looking for equipment like this, we do talk about more dry fire equipment here in the YouTube video. Even things like right in the rain notepads. If you guys are looking for stuff like this, go ahead and check out Shooting Surplus. They are one of the sponsors of this video and of this channel. Huge thank you to them. If you guys are looking for a discount, we do have a discount code in the description. So go ahead and check that out as well as signing up for the newsletter because there are sale notifications there as well. So thank you, Shooting Surplus. You guys are awesome. They keep content like this going. All right, this is one of my favorite things to do. So when I actually pick up a rifle, I don't intend when I get to the range, gotta clear that out, make sure we don't have any ammo on me. When I get to the range, I don't like standing and shooting, but a lot of people will just shoot and deliver without moving much, or they'll get to the range and think I can only ever practice shooting and moving on the range. When in reality, dude, you can move your feet at home, in your hallway, in your family room, in your garage, wherever it is that you are, Pay attention to what your rifle is, your optic is doing. Get that gun out in front of you from low ready, high ready, and practice 
moving around your firearm and moving your firearm around you where you live. Unfortunately, where you may have to use it. That's just the reality of life. So this is what I tend to do. Obviously ensure that the gun is clear and I'll step back a few feet and I'm going to start by working very simple at a low ready with that gun compressed back into me. And as I start walking, I may snap my optic up to my eyes and ensure that I'm finding my optic exactly where I want it. And then of course I can use a shot timer, I can use a part time, and as soon as that second beep goes off, I'm already walking, advancing forward, and I'm snapping my optic to my eyes, hitting the safety finger on the trigger, and I'm working a couple things all at once. Safety, finding my optic, I can even start thinking about height over board, depending on how close or how far away I am from the, the target that I'm working with. And then, once you get that very simple baseline down, bringing that gun to your eyes from high ready, low ready, walking, then I can incorporate, let's transition from rifle to pistol. Let's put a plate carrier on and work with those things. There's so much that we can do without actually firing around, because if you think about it, maybe 90% of shooting a gun is done without feeling the recoil. So let's practice everything that we can and using a shot timer and some of these other tools that we're gonna get into can give you a huge leg up without spending time or money on the range. So with anything that you're doing with a rifle, these Mantis systems, this Blackbeard, it's about $200, a little over, which I get that it's expensive, but it's also still cheaper than just buying a thousand rounds of 5.56. And this replaces your bolt and charging handle. This goes into your magazine well, and here's how it works and what it does. It resets your trigger for you, which on one hand, inside of dry fire, is pretty freaking cool. And then the other thing that it does is it shoots out a laser. So if it's running down the length of your barrel past a suppressor and everything else, it's gonna be pretty freaking zeroed. Now obviously, with that $200, oh boy, that's a tight fit. With that $200, the other benefit that I'm getting is the fact that it's on my gun. So I still have my laser. If I wanna work under uh, night vision, if I wanna work with light, white light, if I wanna work with vis laser, my optic irons, it doesn't matter. Everything's already on the gun. And so I just plug and play this thing. Throw that guy in. Oh yeah, do you hear that? So then whenever I pull the trigger, a little laser comes out as well as, check this out, my trigger is resetting. Now it feels a little bit different, I'm sure because of somehow the, the mechanics in there, the hammer's not coming all the way back and all the way forward, but it does feel like my trigger. This is a CMC single stage and it feels like the trigger that's in this gun. So with all this in mind, let's take my bolt and charging handle out. You know what, this time let's shoot at that uh, TA targets. So I can work my safety, I can work my trigger, and whenever I shoot, I get a quick flash of where was that actually supposed to go? Now granted, I am working with a red dot or a red laser on my gun, and so I need to be tuned in to what's actually happening, but you should be looking at your target anyway, not at your front sight post or at your red dot. So now I'm working with a shot timer telling me when I actually have to start, and then obviously I have to work my safety, trigger finger, the trigger can react as well as I can see where my rounds are actually going. So let's go two to the head and see if I can actually get a good height over bore working from fairly cold. All right, I can tell it was in the A box. That's pretty cool. Let's do it again. Now, one of the feedbacks that a lot of people are aware of is that how, how long did that take? How am I doing? I can check accuracy, but as far as time goes, I can, I can set a part time on my shot timer, but I'm still missing a few feedbacks like accuracy. So let's step into the next iteration, which is introducing an airsoft gun. Okay, so with the idea that we're trying to prove the work that we're doing is actually benefiting us and growing us, the next iteration is something like an airsoft gun. And there's massive upsides to airsoft guns beyond just dry fire. Of course, if you guys haven't seen one of the first YouTube videos that we dropped, uh, we go into some of the details on how to actually take an airsoft event and get good training out of it. And of course, it's super fun too. You can run CQB drills with your, in your house with your buddies. You can shoot each other. But with the idea of dry fire, I now have a projectile coming out of this firearm, let's call it. 
and verify that my rounds are going where they're supposed to go. To a degree, there are some accuracy issues with airsoft guns once you start to get some depth, but man, the ammo's really cheap, and if you get a good one of these, they run for a long time. They run about $1,000 if you buy something that has some recoil, that's gonna have a good lifespan and has weight to it. I don't want a, a chintzy piece of plastic that doesn't actually feel like a gun. One more downside is the fact that I do need to then install stuff onto my firearm. So this Rydon optic is it's an inexpensive optic. I haven't run it enough to know how well it actually shoots on a real gun or how long it lasts. I need to go get another white light, some of those things if I wanna practice with those items. But let's go back to shooting and moving with the rifle. Gonna get some eye pro because something is actually coming out of the gun. I'm gonna start over here on the left. Okay, and then as I'm moving, I'll bring that gun up and engage the target. I can do that multiple times. I can go paste up that target, I can shoot with my buddies, but now I actually have something coming out of the firearm. You good? The camera good? Cool, so am I. You guys get what I'm saying. You have something coming out of the gun to prove and verify, uh, I'm working on my height over bore, or now that I'm pulling the trigger, did I actually pull the trigger right when I thought that, that the, the dot was aligned, my irons were aligned, a laser was aligned? A lot of good benefits to this, but let me show you something even cooler beyond just an airsoft gun. All right, finally, the last iteration of tools that we can use to get good at home. So this is a Unit 4 rifle. These are actually made by LMT for Unit 4, which is super cool because you're getting the same fit, finish, feel. You can change out hand guards, you can change out the stock, you can change out the grip. There's a ton of modifications that you can do to these, but it's not actually a firearm. When it's not serialized, that means it can ship straight to your house, just like an airsoft gun. And while airsoft guns don't have the exact same recoil as a real gun, these things feel legit. Now, once again, just like on an airsoft gun, you're gonna have to go acquire your own optic, whether you're buying a second one or removing the one that you do have on your rifle, slings, lights, whatever it is that you want to actually be practicing with in order to get good reps. Price point, these come in at about $1,000. So, they're not very cheap. That being said, if you are intentionally working at getting better at home, I believe that you will save some money shooting these things. They do shoot blanks and paintballs. I'll show you what those look like. Um, but if your goal is to get better and you have a bunch of extra rifles kicking around, this can easily replace it and give you extra benefits. So let me demo real quick. The way that the magazine is loaded, uh, it's a little bit different than how you load a standard firearm. Um, but you put a sleeve inside of this magazine, which is weighted to feel just like a PMAG, holding 30 rounds. And then they also do fit inside of, if you're curious about it, like STAC pouches or going inside of a plate carrier, they do fit just fine. So the way that I load this is the same as on an AR. I'm going to insert a magazine, rack the charging handle, and then I believe this one is a marking round. So I'll shoot steel so we can see yeah, dude, that thing is super cool. And as you can tell, you're getting a little bit of recoil. Even shooting this with someone who is a first time shooter, trying to get used to the rifle platform, while it's got a little bit of noise to it, it's significantly quieter than shooting a gun with a suppressor. So you can start to talk about, do you see what your dot is doing when you're pulling the trigger? Great, you can relay that to someone else without having ear pro on. You can let someone else shoot something that feels a lot like a gun but is not actually a firearm. And so if someone does get shot, it's not nearly as much of a concern. If you wanna be running drills inside of your home, you can also shoot blanks. So let's see, this one will probably be live because it did have one round in there. Nope. Now check out the recoil on this thing. Yeah, dude, that dot bounces around just like it, not just like it does, depends on the gun, but you are at least getting a good training tool with something that looks and feels and takes a lot of the same parts as an actual rifle. So with that, this is the last tool that we would encourage you guys to consider picking up. Let's wrap this video up and uh, finish with some of our punchlines. Yes, you absolutely have a right to own a firearm. No question to that. But I believe you also have a responsibility if you're going to have that firearm around others, whether it's a rifle with your family around while you're camping or at home, or maybe a pistol that you're carrying every day out in public. 
I believe that you are responsible and you solely own that responsibility to be proficient with it if there's any chance that you could be using it in a really bad scenario. And that's where dry fire, as well as going to the range, comes in. Now, a lot of the tools and items that you can spend extra money on are not going to immediately get you better. Just like buying a suppressor, it's not gonna make you shoot any better. Buying night vision, yeah, you can see at night, but you still have to practice. Same idea with some of these tools. You can buy a shot timer, but man, if you're not dry firing, it's doing nothing for you. So, if I could leave you with anything other than those first three parts at the beginning, make sure that you are investing your time, whether you have dry fire tools or not. If you have some money left over, or if you have some gear left over that you're not actually using, you can then invest that into training tools. But at the end of the day, you are solely responsible to get better on your own. And then also, if you have some good training buddies, encourage them to get out there and get some reps as well. And uh, if you have been dry firing, go beat them on the range. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can hit us up at team at dirtycivilian.com.